Oh my god, yeah, so we didn't... <laughs> okay, to be clear, I know I said, like, bourgeoisie there a couple of times. Nothing that I said there was socialist, by the way. I was like, you... Like, that was, that was, like, basic liberal economics, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it, you know, it's not, you can't even talk about socialism. I was, I was trying to get there with the, with the, the indentured servitude thing because, you know, uh, it's, it, the fundamental logic of coercion and capital maintains its character from slavery all the way to what we have here. It's just different iterations of the same relationship. Um, you know, obviously not all of them are equally bad. Slavery is a hell of a lot worse than this, but it's about the underlying analysis. But I couldn't even get past that, right? He came really close to biting the bullet and coercion. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't get him to bite the bullet in anything because he would do, he would like patronize me, right? He would like, I would, I would like be, be like, okay, you have to bite this bullet or move off it. And he would like pause for a second. He'd be like, well, I know I don't need to explain to you that what you just said is a bunch of bupkis. He's <laughs> like, all right. I, yeah, I feel like I did okay. So to be clear, right, because like I couldn't even advance, I couldn't even advance beyond like my liberal, like the baseline liberal economic positions here. The, the main issue is just that like libertarian economics is insane. It's completely insane. Like I think the clearest example of this was the case with um, uh, undocumented workers, where in spite of the fact that we have a worker shortage and in spite of the fact that uh, undocumented laborers are paid less than citizens who work at those agricultural facilities, there's still a shortage. It's like, what? How does that make sense, right? Like, how can there be a shortage when we have literally less than minimum wage, no worker protections, labor? And it's like, well, the answer is because, like, it's not always that simple, right? It's, it's not always that simple. The supply-demand graph doesn't explain everything. It explains some stuff, but not all of this. Why are you respectful towards the end? He was anything but respectful towards you. You need to tell us truth. Because I feel like I'd already made my point. You know, I, I just, I don't actually take pleasure in, in, uh, in, in being mean, I guess, uh, like outside the context of making an argument. Uh, I'm okay with, in the, in the context of making an argument, it's, it's, it's fine. But like every time I would make a point, he would like run away from it. Like the teacher shortage thing. And he was like, well, shortage by your definition. It's like fucking bro. Something like, something like half of all public schools started the last school year with less than the number of teachers they should have had like it's insane and it's and you just and the administrative blow right at the end of the day like the fundamental rule of politics not economics but politics is that the people in charge will make short-sighted decisions that they perceive to be beneficial for themselves uh people aren't perfectly rational in the sense that they're not like uh you know omniscient gods and they're also not economically rational in the sense that they always pursue their economic self-interest for example plenty of teachers get teaching jobs knowing that they're really difficult and low paying because they want to be like an inspiration to young minds i think that's great i think that's a human spirit that needs to be cultivated people who love something so much that they'll work for it even if it's not like the best choice for them that's passion that's good but yeah, no, it's, 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 yeah, it, it all falls apart. The Walmart thing as well. If you've ever wondered what happened to like middle America or whatever, you can experience this drive from one coast of the United States to another. Okay. Just drive across it and stop in every town along the freeway. And the process that I described has happened in thousands of towns. This is also what happens to the black community, by the way. It's why they burned down Tulsa. Remember Tulsa, the Tulsa race riot? A Tulsa massacre when they bombed it. It's because in a community that doesn't have a lot of money, the best way to keep things up and up is to keep the money in the community. You don't want it to be siphoned out, right? Because like, obviously, if you've got a small town in middle America with like 4,000 people in it, if you spend money on goods and services locally, but the money it keeps in that community, the consequence of that is that the money stays there. Some get siphoned off from taxes. It's not perfect, blah, blah, right? But like the money stays there. And what that means is, is that, you know, you paid for a burger at this place, but now the guy who owns the burger shop has that money. And that burger shop guy is now going to spend his money on the local tool store. And that, and that, it stays in there. That happens too in a, a, a black, that's black nationalism. What I'm describing right now is black nationalism. Tulsa was the big black nationalist experiment. What happens? If black people make an effort to build a local economic faction and keep the money in their community so it doesn't get siphoned off by like big, largely white owned corporations during a time of segregation. Right. Uh, what happens is you get firebombed. <laughs> you, you get slaughtered. 
Uh, that's what happens. But like, or alternatively, Walmart comes in, underprices everything locally. Everyone's like, whoa, I can get everything for cheap now. But whoa, it turns out when you spend money at Walmart, Walmart doesn't then spend that money back in the community. It goes back into the Walmart family's fucking corporate coffers. So yeah, you just kind of burn it out. And that's why a bunch of Walmart employees are on food stamps and welfare and shit. The government subsidizes their low pay. We had the debate. The debate was fun. That, hey, guys. Huh? That was the... I feel like that was the first fun debate we've had in months. We need to get back... need to get back to it. I'm really glad he stopped and listened to me talk when I brought up the carbon monoxide thing. It's just... A benefit of, of, of arguing with older people is that they're not familiar with the kinds of insults that younger people come up with now, so they... <laughs> they walk into them. Did you bring up Coconut Island? I, I didn't think it would be prudent. I, I felt like everyone would get hyped up as I started explaining it, and then I would ask it, and he would just not answer and patronize me. So I, I, didn't, I didn't say it, you know? But it's okay. Time and a place. Time and a place. I don't want to force it. He probably thought you were going to say it because of regulations. Oh, dude, holy shit, that's right! Maybe he paused there because he thought it was part of the broader argument on regulations. That actually makes sense! That's the, that's the best way to insult people. Make it so the setup for your insult logically follows the broader argument so they don't immediately get defensive, but rather, like, try to win. <laughs> that's very wise. Very wise. Most wise. Wise posting. Oh, I saw some people saying that I should have cut him off more. Um, I, I, as time has gone on, I just enjoy cutting people off less. I'm usually more okay with letting people ramble for a bit, especially if I feel like the momentum is already in my favor. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it, especially if I feel like they're digging themselves a bit of a grave. So yeah, it's, it's okay. I don't want to be too, like, contentious. Do you feel bad debating old guys? Sometimes, yeah. I try to tone match, but, like, you know, old guys, no matter how well-meaning they may seem, like, that guy's not a dawdling old fool. His brain work well... His brain has the capacity to work just as well as mine does. You know, it's not like he, he it's not like I'm going into a retirement home and finding some guy with dementia. I, sometimes I feel that way with old people, but I have to remember, right? I hope to stay in this game for a while. One day I'm going to be old, properly old. And when I am, I hope people treat me with all the hatred and contempt and belittlement that they do now that I'm 30. I just, that's what I'm hoping. Okay. I, since I just, I, I don't want to be patronized, all right? I don't, I, I want to, I, you know, as long as I'm sharp, as long as I don't have Alzheimer's or dementia, as long as my brain stays sharp, I can be 70, I can be 80, I want people to feel comfortable belittling the shit out of me, because otherwise I'll feel patronized, you know? Why do the ANCAPs have gout of the mind, a strange growth that persists, the uric acid crystal formation that encrusts the frontal lobes, the yellow rot? It's in their nature. The libertarian dude never made any arguments. He just waved away anything he doesn't agree with slash believe is nonsense. Oh, yeah, by the way, I think it's really fitting that we talked about praxeology before talking to him because that whole debate was praxeology on display, you know? Uh, well, these market forces will have this outcome. They don't. They, they don't. Right here, they don't. That's not happening. Well, they will. It's like, yeah, yeah. You fucking destroyed this debate, Vosh, one of your best yet. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I had a really good time. I wish it could have gone uh, further. You know, we, it's tough to have in-depth conversations on that level. Any tips for not getting overwhelmed by people like this? Not just in debate, but dealing with people who refuse to live in reality. It's far too common. Uh, I mean, I try not to engage with them in real life, right? I mean, if you're talking, if you have to engage with people like that, you know, I tend to avoid talking about stuff like that because you're not going to change their mind, right? I do this for an audience because I think the audience benefits from it. Uh, but I don't know if that guy does. Also, uh, be confident. Believe in yourself, you know? Sake, thanks the 4T1 subs. Two hours with someone you should have called retarded and berated. OKBV okay, didn't happen for this. Oh, well, okay, I was pretty condescending at times, all right? I think I met... The standard. I do wish when he threw you the freedom bone early on, you would have jumped in it. I heard you start to, but then he got dumber. Yeah, well, well, I mean, we didn't even get to talk about freedom, right? Positive versus negative freedom. If you're ever arguing with a libertarian, that's where you go. Positive versus negative freedom. Libertarians, in the right-wing sense, promote negative freedom, as in freedom from rules. Taxation, law, whatever else. But real freedom is positive freedom, the ability to do what you want to do, right? A person dropped in the middle of a rainforest with no clothes, water, or food might have literally no laws, a 
affecting them and is therefore in a negative sense as free as a human can be. But what can they do with that freedom? Not much but die. Positive freedom, a freedom might involve rules, but it's, uh, the rules exist to enhance your overall experience of life. For instance, we all have a rule that keeps us from killing each other, but that makes my life more free. Maybe I can't kill other people. Okay, fine. But other people can't kill me. That's cool. You know? Some basic social contract stuff.